Hey, this is Boyd coming to you from Game Castle College Park. We decided that we needed to do a little bit of a video on how to get people moved over from D&D 5th edition to Pathfinder 2nd edition. Before we jump into all the fun action, go ahead and like, subscribe, and all that other magic on our channel. Anyway, we've had a lot of interest amongst our store community in Pathfinder 2E since, well, you know. And then Paizo came out with their open RPG creative license, or really all of our open RPG creative license video to help people who've been playing 5e transition as seamlessly as possible into Pathfinder 2nd edition. Real quick, what this video is and isn't. I'm gonna give you five real quick areas where PF2E is a little bit different so that you can jump into the game as quickly as possible. This video is not gonna cover character creation. There are tons of great resources out there and we're just not gonna recreate the wheel. And remember, just like every role-playing game, people forget stuff at the table all the time and it's fine for you to do that too. Okay, so what are the five things that you need to know about Pathfinder 2? There's the three action economy, expanded opportunities to crit, what happens with nat ones and nat 20s, the proficiency system, and types of bonuses. That's it. Sounds pretty similar to D&D, doesn't it? All right, let's hop right in to the three action economy. 5e players, you're probably used to having a move that you can be splitting around during your turn, maybe a move attack, then move again an action, probably an attack, and maybe a bonus action. PF2E, much simpler. You just have three actions. A move, it's an action. An attack, we call it a strike, it's an action. You want to attack three times, done. You want to move three times, done. Does that mean that you're going to get a lot further than you could get normally? Yes, it certainly does. That's it. Yeah, just kidding. So most actions take one of those three actions, but there are some that take multiple actions, mainly spells. Uh, the other big thing to remember is that a lot of the actions have what's called the attack tag attached to them. And every additional time you use those, you're gonna take a minus five penalty. So if you decide to attack twice on your turn, you're gonna take a minus five penalty on that second attack. Three times, a minus 10 penalty. See that three attack thing, is good, but it's not as good as you thought it was. There's two other sorta actions that you probably want to know about. The first is the free action. It's exactly what it sounds about like. It is an action and it doesn't cost you any of your three actions. Lastly, you've got your reaction. Reaction happens on someone else's turn and it always has a trigger. What's the classic reaction? Attack of opportunity. Trigger, somebody moves out of a square that your character threatens. What do you get to do? Make an attack of opportunity. We're levels of success now. And I'm gonna be combining that as to what happens with expanded opportunities for critting and with nat ones and nat 20s. So as a 5e player, you're probably used to a natural 20 critting. And depending on your table, you're probably used to a natural one automatically failing. Pathfinder 2e takes this a little bit further. First big thing to know about critting is it's a little more dynamic. Instead of just hitting or missing, every action is gonna have what's called a critical success, a success, a failure, or a critical failure. You just hit the DC, maybe that's the armor class on an attack, maybe it's something else, that's a success. You below the DC, that's a failure. But if you beat the DC by 10 or more, that's gonna be a critical success. Fall below the DC by 10 or more, and you're gonna suffer a critical failure. Pretty easy, right? And it's pretty cool the way that works out. Uh, what do nat 1s and nat 20s do? Well, a nat 1 is going to in decrease your level of success by one step. How does that play out at the table? It's really easy. So let's say that you're trying to hit something with an armor class of 12 and you have a plus 14 to hit. Hey, you automatically succeed, but you roll a 1. So now you've rolled a 15. Normally that's a success. The crit one's gonna take that down one level from a success to a failure. Works the exact opposite and way better way with a nat 20. You would have had a regular success. Now it's a critical success. Really is that simple. We got two real basic types of rolls I wanna go over just to make 
clear sort of how the system works. The first is the attack roll. People are gonna be making a lot of these. On a critical success, you're gonna do double damage. On a success, you're gonna do normal damage. And on a failure or a critical failure, you're gonna miss. Then there's something that we call the basic saving throw. Spellcasters, you're gonna see that a lot of your damage dealing spells have a save called a basic reflex save or a basic fortitude save. What does that mean? Well, they're gonna roll the save and critical success, gonna take no damage. Success takes half, failure takes full, critical failure takes double. That's it. Congratulations, we have basically run through everything you need to know about critting. Now let's talk proficiency. 5e players, you're gonna be used to proficiency in terms of skills and saving throws, but PF2 said, why stop there? PFC is, PF2 is going to assign some level of proficiency to almost every role you make. That's gonna be a proficiency with types of weapons, types of armor that's gonna go into your armor class, proficiency with saves, going to your saving throws, proficiencies with different types of skills. We've got five levels of proficiency, starting at untrained and working all our way up to legendary. Untrained is exactly what it means. And all you're gonna get to add to a role if you're untrained in a particular area is gonna be your ability score bonus, which is gonna work just like it does in 5e. Uh, but if you're trained, all of a sudden things start getting a little more exciting because you're gonna add plus two and you're gonna add your ability score bonus and you're gonna add your level. Pop that up to expert and that plus two is gonna flip up to plus four. Masters get plus six and legendary is gonna go all the way up to plus eight. You can increase your proficiency in skills pretty easily. Uh, Increasing your proficiency in weapon proficiencies, types of armor, perception, and saving throws is gonna mostly be determined by your class features. Though you can increase them a little bit faster by taking some class feats or some general feats. That's getting into character creation stuff. And as we've noted, there's lots of good people out there that already know how to do that. Check out a lot of other videos on the internet. Okay, so last one, let's talk about different types of bonuses. And I can't remember how 5e handled these, and I'm not feeling up to pulling out my player's handbook right now. So I'm just gonna talk about how they work in PF2e. Hope that works for y'all. So you're gonna have three different types of bonuses. And when I say three, there's actually four. One is gonna be an item bonus. One is gonna be a status bonus. One's gonna be a circumstance bonus. And the last type of bonus is untyped. The trick here to remember is with the three types of bonuses, you're just gonna use your one best one. So if the bard's got Inspire Courage going on and the cleric has cast Guidance on you, those are both plus one circumstance bonuses. You just take the best one. They're not gonna stack. Similarly, let's say with an item bonus, you have a plus one longbow, but you're firing a plus two arrow. You're just gonna take that plus two. It's the best bonus in the item category. One exception to that are gonna be untyped bonuses. They're super rare, but when they do come up, they stack. That's gonna be really, really, really awesome. And it really is that simple. I hope that this was really helpful for people. I think you're ready to play PF2E like a pro. Remember these five particular areas and no one will ever know that you're new to the system. Thanks for tuning in. Everybody have a great day. If you didn't already, like, subscribe, and all that jazz.